So thank you for giving me this opportunity to present this evening. Like I said, my name's uh, Rob Merriman. I work at Greytech. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the Steel tab in Revit. So hopefully this will is working. That's me without the uh, before when I was allowed to have my hair cut. Uh, I have recently become an Autodesk Expert Elite member, um, which took a quite a lot of work. So I'm quite pleased with that. And if anyone does have any questions, my contact information is there. I am on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, like Mark said, I don't think there's too many Rob Merriman's out there, so you should be able to find me. Uh, jumping on the back of what Mark said, if you do have a QR scanner, my contact information is there, so you can uh, put me straight into your phone. Um, I am now an Autodesk certified instructor um, and an AutoCAD and Autodesk Revit professional. So my background is a as a structural steelwork draftsman. Um, as soon as I left university, I got a job uh, in a company that did architectural metalwork, and then we relocated to Manchester, and I worked as a structural steelwork draftsman, predominantly using advanced steel, um, which is where the tools from the Revit steel tab have actually come from. Uh, so I work for Grey Tech UK as an application engineer, doing demonstrations, training, technical support, customization um, for most of the AEC uh, collection, predominantly advanced steel, but now Revit, we look at Navisworks as well, anything to do with structures and steelwork. So tiny little bit about Grey Tech. We are an Autodesk Platinum partner. Uh, headquarters in France and we operate across 11 countries and 48 offices worldwide, uh, 550 staff and we are technically driven so we've got I think 350 of our staff are technical staff and we do have our own development centre in Romania so we develop as well as being an Autodesk reseller we develop our own products such as advanced design and some of the power packs that you might have seen for Revit. So I'm going to start with advanced steel and probably all of you guys are going to go, hang on, what, where the Manchester Revit user group? So why are you talking about advanced steel? So today we're going to be looking at the steel tab in Revit. So this now includes tools for connections, notches, copes, manually modeling bolts and welds. Uh, if you haven't seen it, that is what the steel tab in Revit looks like. The reason I started with advanced steel is all that technology has come from advanced steel so 2014 autodesk bought advanced steel from gray tech um, that is your revit ribbon on the right hand side and then that is the advanced steel tool palette on the left hand side so i've been using these tools for yeah 12 years now um, you might have seen uh, 2016, I believe, they put about 20 connections in. 2017, you had some connections. You still needed to install the connections as a separate tool. And 2018, they upped the number of connections to 130. And then 2019, you actually got the steel tab. Um, and then 2020 and 21, they've been updating that tab. So the reason they've put those tools into Revit, if you are of a structural discipline, Autodesk are trying to reduce the siloed workflows. When I was a steel draftsman, what I would do is I would usually get your PDF drawings, your plans, elevations, and sections, and then in advanced steel, I would start the model all over again. Now, if you do a structural model in Revit, we can actually transfer it into advanced steel. So it's trying to reduce the siloed workflow. So if you actually model some connections, the advanced steel user then doesn't have to remodel everything. Uh, maybe in future events, I could show you guys some of that. We're not probably not gonna have time to do that today. This is the bit that thankfully I'm not in the room, so none of you can throw anything at me, but there were, when you put the connections on, and the steel elements, they will do certain things to your standard Revit functionality. Um, so the first thing you need to know is you need to set the level of detail to fine. If it's not, you won't see the connections. You'll just see a big round, probably green circle. And in your visibility graphics, there is a new category for structural connections. So if you're using a company template, you might not have that ticked. Um, as usually what we get as support cases is I can't see any connections. So families, the steel tools only work with structural columns and structural framings. 
and they do need to meet the following criteria. So the material for the model behavior has to be set to steel and the section set shape parameters must be a supported shape. Um, I do have links to this. So if anyone does, I can print this out as a PDF handout. So if anyone does want to copy of these links, just drop me an email and I will send you a copy of the presentation. The steel fabrication format, this is the bit that you guys might not like as much. When you apply a steel element to a beam or a column, the geometry changes to a steel fabrication format. It's the only way Autodesk could get these tools to work. Although they look exactly the same and none of your properties will change, they have changed in the background to a steel fabrication format. Once you've done this, the change is irreversible. So if you are looking at these steel connections, even if you delete a connection, the framing or column is still a structural fabrication format. The only way to reset it is to delete and remodel the beam or framing. Um, so I have seen a few people on the Autodesk forums didn't realize that to the end. And then when I tell them they've got to remodel it, they're not happy. So I'd rather tell you all now up front. Things like your start and end cutbacks are ignored as soon as you apply a connection and no longer available. Beam handlers are disabled. You can't do groups or assembly. So it's just worth knowing this if you are going to look at these steel tools and your standard Revit cuts and copes are now replaced with tools from the steel tab. So we're actually going to go in. This is a pre-recorded video I've done before, but I will narrate over the top of it. Um, like I said, if you do have any questions, we'll either take questions at the end or just reach out to me and we can discuss it from there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to apply some connections. But before we can apply any connections to the model, we have to load the connections into the model we're working on. So if you're an engineering company, you might want to load these into your template file. But we've got the 130 connections and they can be broken down into groups. So we're going to start with a base plate connection. So if you're uh, adding these details into your drawing sheets or you're doing model in place families, it might be worth having a look at some of these connections because they can be reused by the actual steel detailers. So we're just going to load those connections into the model. And then what we do is we will select a column just getting ahead of myself on here so we'll just wait for me to catch up so we select the column we'll go to the steel tab and then we will click the connection now because we've selected a column it will then filter out the connections that work on a single input so the column is just a single input and then that will put my steel connection on so what it will do is it will put the base plate on you can tab through it, models the anchors, and all those anchors come from a database from Advanced Steel. And that little symbol there is the weld. So those two items are now attached in the workshop. So if we put this into Advanced Steel, we would be able to run a fabrication drawing for it. Once we've got one connection on, we can create different types. So obviously you might have five or six different base plates in your model. So what we'll then do is we'll duplicate the base plate. We'll call it BP1. And then we can go and modify the parameters. So just showing there the different types. We wouldn't advise ever editing the type that you get in out of the box, because if you then go and change it, all your base plates will update. And all of these connections have this dialog box. So we get a little preview tab in here. And then we can change everything about that connection. So we'll start by changing the plate thickness to 15 millimeters. We're then going to go and put in some pack and grout because we wouldn't go hard size to the concrete foundation. We want probably 25 millimeters um, for pack and grout in there. So what we can do is we can say we want to shorten the column by a value. And that value is going to be the base plate thickness plus our pack and grout value. So if I can remember correctly, I think I've got a 15 millimeter base plate thickness and I'm going to put 25 millimeters of pack and grout. So even my rudimentary maths, I can do 25 plus 15 
is I want to shorten the column by 40 millimeters. This dialogue, we've got 400 different options, so we don't have time to go through all of them, but we can control everything to, that, to do with that base plate. So we can control the size of the base plate and that's working from the center of the column. So if you want uh, one corner to be offset and not the other, we can obviously have four different projections in there. And that will update to give me a particular base plate size. If you wanted a particular corner finish on every corner, we've got the four corners of the plate, so we can put a radius in there, a notch. We're probably not going to bother on this base plate. We'll just keep going through the different options. Because if we're doing a big structural project in 12 years, I very rarely come across a point where I've actually had to put uh, chamfers on corners. Now we can control the anchors and the hole information for this base plate. So we're using holding down bolts, uh, but there are about 50 preloaded anchors. So if you're using like a Hilti casting anchor or a resin anchor, they're already in the system. And then we've got the hole tolerance. So for a 20 millimeter uh, anchor, the hole tolerance at the moment is set to two millimeters. So that will put a 22 millimeter hole in my base plate. So if I change that to variable, that will give me a four millimeter hole in the base plate. If you've got a bigger hole in the base plate, you then might need washer plates. So we can model washer plates. And now we can control the distances of the anchors parallel to the web and then parallel to the flange. So we've got control in both directions and this is the bit that you've probably not seen before. We can control the welding information. So as soon as we put a connection on, it actually attaches the plate to the column and we can control the weld size. So when you're labeling these connections and you're doing your base plate sheets, if you put a 10 millimeter fillet weld in there, when we come to label these items, the labels will show that it's a 10 millimeter fillet weld. So hopefully if you're a structural engineer and you're doing some of these base plates, all of this information, you're probably gonna to have to model or do as 2D line information. We can now actually model as Revit elements. And we can go as far as put in, if it's galvanized, the system knows the size of the beams and we can put galvanizing holes in there as well. So they are very powerful in what they can do. Um, a little bit later, if you've got company standards or you only have a few different base plate types, we can show you how you can transfer those from project to project. So once we've made our changes, we'll just apply those and that will update for me. So that is a connection with one beam as an input. Now with the connections that are in uh, the Revit steel tab or the Revit steel connections. We can have a single input. We can have two beams as an input. We can have three beams as an input. Can even go as far as four beams for an input. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a single sided end plate connection between the column and the beam. So I'm going to choose the column first and then the beam. And then what we're going to do is we'll go back to the steel tab, choose a connection, and now it will filter the connections that work with two inputs. So that will put a single sided end plate on for me. And then you can see that has automatically shortened the beam and it's put the connections on. So what we're looking at here is the input order for our connection. So the solid fill is the main member and the number two is the secondary item. And if we flip them around, that will put the connection on the other way around. So it will actually put the end plate on the column, not the beam. So if you do miss up, mess up your input, uh, you can change it without having to delete the connection. So again, what we're going to do, we're just going to modify the parameters. Basically, anything that you want to change, plate thickness, number of bolts, bolt spacings, even the type of bolt, we can do all of that now within the connection. So again, if the system needed to notch the 
uh, the secondary beam it would notch it automatically it knows where the two beams are it knows the flange thickness the radius is so it would notch automatically we're obviously going to change the end plate thickness here now if we were erecting this we might want to pull that plate back a millimeter so we've actually got some tolerance on site so we can do all of that and then what I'm going to do is just change the bolts horizontally and then we're going to change them vertically as well so what I'm doing here is that plate at the moment was 30 millimeters from the top of the beam I'm just going to put it six millimeters below and then we're going to increase the number of bolts to three now when I'm sort of showing this you might not put every connection on because that is the steel detailer and the steel fabricator usually the steel fabricators job you as the engineer for the project or even the architect might want certain connections the visible connections to be designed in a way that look more aesthetically pleasing than some rough and ready steel connections so you might not do every connection but you might do three or four throughout the model and then you can pass that model down to the steel fabricator who can then apply the connections that are probably going to be buried in the walls so that is a simple connection between two elements I believe next we're going to look at transference and project standards so we're opening an existing project so if you have three or four base types that you use on every project you can save them into a file called steel connections or you can even just transfer things from a previous project so we've got some fin plates we've got some connections that have notches in and some three bolts we've got some what we call toe plates across uh, the toes of a flange and we have a haunch connection so if you have common details you don't have to set them up uh, every time this was introduced in Revit 2021 um, in Revit 2019 you had the steel connections but you didn't have the types so you couldn't create different types you could only have one base plate uh, 2020 they've now brought in the types and we can also now transfer the structural connections between projects so we'll import just the new connections only and then when we go and have a look at the connections in a second so what you have to remember here is at the beginning I only brought in two connections only loaded two connections into the model but now in here you can see that we brought through all the other connections from a previous project or our company standard so there's my five uh, my 10 bolt 15 mil end plate and that will put that onto the column so we're just gonna put a couple more of these connections on and then we're gonna look at some manual connections because these are all connections that have been done with the connection vault but there are times uh, especially on house building type projects where you might be having to do your own families to do flange plates top or bottom flange plates to support brickwork with the new steel tab we can actually model plates in and we can just click the uh, top flange and model plate straight on top so I just put a couple more connections on here and just show in a few of the different connections that are available in the system so we're just going to be looking at what I would call a toe plate connection so you can see here we're getting the warning at the bottom that our uh, our beam shortenings are being disabled like I said once you've put these connections on even if you delete the connection the steel member is still this steel fabrication format and that can't be undone so you do have to just be a little bit careful if you make a mistake and you want to go right back to just a piece of structural framing or structural column 
you will need to remodel it. So you can see there that end of the beam that I just hovered over, the cutback has been disabled. That's because we put the connection on the other end of the beam. And this one, if uh, this is, I've probably gone a little bit too nitty gritty with the steel connections here, but if you're connecting into a hollow section, like a big box section column, you obviously can't get your hands down a six meter column to put the nuts in. So what we have is a, what in the steelwork industry is a hollow bolt, which is a bit like a rule plug for steelwork. Um, so they are already in the system as well. So you don't need to create any new families or anything. Um, they are all in the system. So those are the real basics um, of putting connections. What we're going to look at next is how we actually copy those connections around the model. So we're just probably going to go to the top of steel. So you do need to make sure you're in level of detail fine. But we have our connection in there, so we can select the connection. Now, if you're just copying it to somewhere else, you can just copy it using the standard Revit copy tool. You will always get the warning that the cutbacks are disabled. So you can see the other end of the beam, the cutbacks being disabled. If I wanted it to, if I wanted to, I could then mirror that connection to the other side of the column. But with Revit 20. 20 there is a new tool that allows you to populate the whole model with connections with one click so if we go back to the 3d model I had a little error there so that's just going to get deleted i believe so if we've got a connection and we want to copy it round the model in 2020 there's been a new tool called propagate joint so if i want that base plate to go on every other column that is the same section size we can select the column right click uh, sorry select the base plate right click choose propagate and that will look for every other structural column that is the same section size in the model you can see they've gone blue so the blue means it's applying a connection and that will then put that same connection on every column that's in the model without us having to copy it around. It does work on what Revit can see on the screen. So if you didn't want it to go to every column, you would just hide a couple in the view and then it would update. It would just propagate to what it can see on the screen. So if you've got an enormous building where you've got, I don't know, maybe 100 columns and you only want that base plate to go on to 20 columns, you can uh, hide 80 of them and it will only propagate to what it sees. So it is a very, very powerful tool, especially if you need to do like a foundation plan and show what base plates are in there. So in here, we can choose the propagate connection command and that's going to put that same connection on every uh, column to rafter. So if an item is blue like it is there, that is now processing the connection in the background. So you can still uh, carry on working in other views and other sheets. Um, so if you're propagating lots of connections, if the element has gone blue, it means it's calculating in the background, but it's not going to stop you doing any other work within your Revit model. So you can see there, it's not put the connections on yet because it's working out what to do, but it's slowly going around putting the connections on. So actually, once you've got a couple of these connections in, it really doesn't take a long time to get these, uh, what the system calls propagated around the model. Um, and then you almost have a finished model in terms of basic connections. Sometimes it will get a little bit confused. You can see here it's trying to put, no, it's done it okay. You do sometimes have to be careful with the propagate. It might put two connections in the same place, um, but the steel draftsman would pick that up. Um, where you guys have Navis works for class checking in advanced deal, we do have our own class checking tool. Um, so it will tell us if we've got two connections. So we're going to look at a few other tools within the steel tab. Now we're going to work on this little uh, balcony frame. 
So what we're actually going to do is the balcony frame. I want the external members to all be welded together, uh, including the little trimmers in there. So it's going to go in as one welded balcony and be installed in one go. Um, so we do have a notch command. So that replaces obviously your, your normal Revit notch command. This is for the steel elements. So again, you choose the main member, you choose the secondary member, that will notch between the two elements, and then we can choose modify parameters. Now, all of these connections are parametric. So if you change the section size, whatever parameters you have set up will update automatically. So what we're gonna change in here is the distance to the web, the distance to the flange, and the distance that is clear on the inside. So we are gonna give our fabricators a fighting chance of welding this together. So we're just gonna give them a millimeter clear tolerance all around. And that will put that connection in. Now you can see in the top corner of the steel, we've got a sharp point, but in the steel, there is a radius. So we're gonna come back in a second and we're gonna put a corner finish uh, on that little notch. So you can see um, item number five. And what you have with all of these dialog boxes, pretty much every tab, you will get a picture for each dialog box. So you can see what the values are going to do. So we need to put a little chamfer in there. So that is our corner finish. And we'll just put our corner finish to straight. And then we can set a value in there. And that then, when we close it down, that will give me my little notch in there. So that has now been notched and welded to the beam. The last little bit we're going to look at is the manual modeling of things like plates and bolts. So you can see our little notch connection in there. So if I moved either of the beams or I changed the section size of that beam across the front of the balcony, the notch information would update automatically. So what we want to do now is we want to mitre these two PFCs together. So they're gonna be a welded connection. And then we are going to shorten the column with an L-shaped base or cap plate now, there is no connection in the system that will do that for me, so we are going to have to create the elements ourselves, but then what we can do is we can roll those into a custom connection. So in Revit, you have 130 connections, but if you can't achieve what you want with a connection, you now have the option to use the building blocks and model the elements manually, and then we can roll all of that into a custom connection. So we've put the mitre on the two beams and we've created a weld between them. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna model a plate. So if this was a residential building, it could be a flange plate on the steel, like I said, to support the brickwork. So now if you click the plate command, you simply have to choose the face of the beam that you want to draw a plate on or just a reference plane. Doesn't have to be connected to anything. So we can pick a plane, we'll choose the bottom of the plate, and then what we'll do, it is a simple case of sketching out the steel plate. So it can be any shape, have chamfers on it, radiuses on it, you can now draw whatever shape plate you want. Like I said, it might just be flange plates for you guys, but being the steel detailer, if if you've modeled them as steel elements, they will actually come through into advanced steel rather than model in place families. So that is now my advanced steel plate. It can be any thickness we want. It can be any coating we want. There are coatings in the system. And now what we need to do is we need to if I can remember what we're going to do first, I think we're going to trim that column down before we put the bolts in. So we're going to cut the column to the flange of the PFC and then we'll extend it by 10 millimeters. So we'll just flip the cut down. 
So that's now trimmed off our column. And we're just going to put a 10 mil gap in there to account for the plate thickness. And then the last little bit we're going to do, we can now model bolts, anchors, holes or shear studs. So if you need to put holes in beams or service holes in beams, we can actually now do that with the whole tool. So I'm going to put a bolt in and we're going to bolt between the plate and the PFC. And then we are just going to sketch the pattern of bolts that we want. So I do only want one bolt. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a pattern of four. And then in here, I have all the different bolt types. And what I'm going to do to begin with is change the number to one on each side. And that will just give me a single bolt. We can control things like the bolt type. So there are countersunk bolts. There are set screws. If you want different types of bolts, we could add them into advanced steel and then replicate the database inside Revit. So we're just going to change it to a standard bolt nut and washer. Now, if, if the nut wasn't tightened up enough, over time that bolt could come loose and then could drop out. So we do even have the option to flip the bolt round. So the nut goes on the underside. At least if the nut came off, the bolt isn't going to drop down. I'm just going to... I think I'm even going to mirror this. Yeah. So we're just going to mirror the bolt to go on the other side. And that will give us our bolt. So that is our connection. It doesn't take too long to make up that connection. But if we want to uh, use that on the opposite side or we want to um, use it on other projects, we don't want to have to go through that process again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our own custom connection once I finish welding the column to the plate. So Revit has, like I said, 130 steel connections. They're not going to cover every scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a generic connection. And then we're going to select all the elements we've created and turn that into a custom connection. So the input elements are the column and the two beams. And we'll just put that in as a generic connection. And then we have the option to customize. So what we can do there is we can then call it whatever we want. And then we can add elements to that connection. So if I select everything I've created, all of those connections are, all of those elements, sorry, are now part of a connection that I've made myself. So if we select the elements on the opposite side, and we go to the connections, we will now see that we now have our custom connection in there. So I might have to just flip the input, so points two and three, so we just drag those so it uses different inputs, and then that will just rotate the connection around for me. I think, there's a little bit left. So if we go back to our model, the last little bit is, say we've got structural steel that we need to put some contours in, some notches, some cutouts for service beams or service pipes, or we just want uh, a decorative end on our rafters because it's going to be exposed steelwork. I'm probably biased because I've been working in steel work for so long, but uh, to all the architects out there, let's have a bit more exposed steel work. We can make it look nice. So what we're going to do here, we're actually going to put a contour cut 
into the web of the beam. Now to pick the web of the beam, I actually do need to go to level of detail medium. And now I can just sketch out any contour that I want. So we're just going to do something fairly basic and put some radiuses in there. But what we're trying to achieve, or the reason these tools are now in Revit, is like I said, to reduce the siloed workflow. So all of this will come through to advanced deal. It is advanced deal functionality, but it means that the detailer can then continue with things like the staircases, the railings, the complicated metalwork and detailing that needs to be done in advanced steel, but your design intent, they don't have to remodel from uh, GA drawings or PDF files. And as well, if your steel fabricator is using advanced steel, I can, in advanced steel, I could add all the stairs, railings, and then we can actually update the Revit model and synchronize all of the things that we've done in advanced steel. So if you, if I need to move a beam or if I add something in, it will actually update your Revit structural model. Uh, so both advanced steel is now in the AC collection, has been for three years now. Um, so the workflows between the two bits of software are very good in the newer versions. That I can put straight into advanced steel and okay I've got to do some work in advanced steel but I could then run the fabrication drawings from that and the fabrication data to go into the drill and saw lines um, to actually get the steel work on site. So if anyone has worked on any jobs in and around Manchester when I was detailing I modelled the steelwork for the Manchester Dogs Home, the one that got rebuilt, and the Alchemist in Salford, um, the big gold sort of spaceship looking structure in Salford. So I did the steelwork in those two using advanced steel, and it would be nice to have some of these workflows. And that I believe is me. That is probably my time up as well. So if anyone does have any questions, uh, I will see if I can see the chat window. Well, thank you very much for that, Rob. So as before, if anyone's got any questions, just stick your hand up, please. Oh, and if you want to, um, can we see them better maybe if you were? Uh... Oh, somebody's asked in chat, hi, Rob, can you create cast in plates? So, do you mean cast in place concrete or like cast in place anchors? I suppose what I'll do is I, once I think I've finished presenting, I'll probably be able to see the chat window because I can't see it at the moment for some okay, reason. Okay, so if Brian Taylor, if you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Oh. Or you can type in, oh, there you are, okay. Hear me? Yes. Yeah, it was basically a steel beam into a concrete wall. And if it had the ability to uh, show the rebar and studs on the back of the plate, I just wonder if it was that. Uh, if it was done with anchors, rebar does come under the sort of concrete element. So I probably wouldn't be able to model a rebar, but I could model a plate. I suppose is the rebar welded to the plate? Yes. I probably wouldn't be able to do it as a rebar element, but I could do it as like a round bar structural framing family. That's good. That's, that's, that's um, so good. yeah, we could do that and then roll all of that into a custom connection. Because that is quite a, with base plates and casting plates, we often have to actually model those. Um, and um, yeah, it'd be just quite good to be able to have that automated in a way and yeah. rolled under a type and then therefore it creates the details quite easily. Yes, because once you've got the modelling done, when you come to do the details, you don't have to sort of do any detail lines. When you model the plates, you can tag the plate, you can tag the bot, you can tag everything now. Exactly, that would be, that'd be the idea. Um, so yeah, for your rebar, it would, unless you had a rebar family that was structural framing, that's the only thing. They've got to be structural framing or structural column elements to work. 
A round bar would work, Rob, to be fair. Um, but yeah, ra round bars, you can just weld that straight to a plate. So yeah, you can do that. Right. Okay. Is it is it in the library, though, the casting plate? There will be a connection for a casting plate, or you would just model a plate on the end of the beam and then roll it all into one custom connection. So okay. if I okay. close this down, I do have Revit open, just in case the video all went wrong. But there will be, is the plate on the end of the beam, like a base plate, but horizontally, or is it on the bottom flange of the beam? It's actually placed within the depth of the wall and it's flush with the face of the wall. Okay, so I would actually probably look at like a base plate for that. I know it sounds a little bit odd. Yeah. Um, or I would look at plates at beam. If you did an end plate connection, that will model a plate on the end of a beam. And then yeah. you could model in the round bars on the end of that. Okay. So that would do it for you. Okay, th thanks. Um, we have another question from um, John Fogarty. If you want to unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Sorry, Rob, can, can you, um, good evening, could, could you um, model a flange plate onto a beam? Yes. It's full length, is that quite simple to do? Yeah, so that would be if we go to, let's do it in here, so let's just pick that beam for example. So what I would do is use the steel tab, use the plate function, uh, pick a plane, let's say the top flange because it's there and then you just start sketching probably a little bit big hit the OK button and then that will model the plate in there and then we can change the thickness if we want to oh, brilliant and then what I would do from there so if we need to edit that we can just edit the sketch in there and then if it depends if you're giving it to a detailer who's got advanced steel, but you can weld the two together and then you can pick a point to put place that weld. It doesn't really look like much is happening, but when that comes through to advanced steel, I've got this model sort of finished. In advanced steel, you can get it to say, right, show me, I've lost my mouse completely. Show me what's attached in the workshop to like this column. And if you've welded it in Revit, it will, everything that is attached is attached in advanced steel. So the base plate, for example, and then that gives us fabrication drawings. So as long as they're welded together, that's the sort of output advanced steel will do for that whole model. And each drawing will take two to three seconds, depending on your computer spec. Um, but yeah, you can, you just use the plate command and you can model a plate any way you want. Okay, Thank you. thanks for that question, John. Um, we've got a question from Keith, if you want to unmute and ask, please. Hi, Rob. Um, that, was, that was really good, really interesting. Um, I was just wondering, uh, obviously most of the fabricators that we work with uh, seem to prefer Tecla as, a, as an option, which gives us no end of headaches with um, kind of bringing in IFCs and things. Is Advanced Steel... Um, working with Revit, is that a viable alternative now for, for fabricators? Uh, yeah. Are more more fabricators picking it up? Yeah, so we have, as because uh, Advanced Steel was a grey tech product, so I think we've got between three and 400 Advanced Steel users or companies using Advanced Steel. Obviously, because they're both Revit products, Autodesk have worked really hard on the transfer mechanism between the two. So you do have an Advanced Steel extension so yeah. you can export this model and that that is this model brought into advanced steel so i've not done anything i'll do let me just i won't do that model i'll do a quick model but if you've as long as you've set everything up properly in revit so it does depend on the families you've used and things like that but if i try and find now then the pressure's on to try and find within my folder structure that's all over the place. But if I bring that in, that is a file that I created in Revit. So it was an empty file. 
structural framing, structural columns, structural walls, structural foundations. I want to import. It will convert straight into the uh, advanced steel elements. It depends how complicated your project is. I would say if you're if it's structural if it's sort of columns and beams and connections, the workflow is really good. Uh, I will just ignore this mapping and then fix my databases. So this is say Keith, you've modeled this in Revit. You send me a particular file. That is now my advanced steel model. And in terms of functionality, would advanced steel be comparable to Tecla? Yes, it is. It is. It's their main competitors. Basically they do exactly the same stuff. If, if you want to put it in car terms, one's a Ferrari, one's a Lamborghini. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go down the car route and go, which is now the better car. I'm not going to open that debate, but they, they are both steel detailing packages. Yeah, I think, as I say, we, we've obviously struggled with, with Tecla, but it seems to be the, the sort of preferred, I guess it's been the industry standard almost for, for fabricators. Well, um, do you know, it was, I suppose it, so Tecla, when it first started, I won't take up too much of everyone's time, but when it first started, Strucad was the sort of first 3D steel modeling package to the market. Yeah. Then Tecla and Advanced Steel sort of followed and Tecla bought Strucad and shelved it and then gave everyone a ridiculous deal on the Tecla licenses and training. So they, they sort of bought the market really. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, I'm, I'm afraid we're going to have to move on because we've overrun yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So there is another question for you in chat. Maybe you could answer that. I'll do, yes, oh, I'll pick you. that up in the chat. No problem. Okay, so thanks very much for your presentation. That's right. If anybody wants to come and present that's not an architect, we really do enjoy the non-architectural ones. And I can say that because I'm an architect. So.